Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, and today we're going to be checking out the first They Shall Not Pass DLC weapon, the Ribby Roll 1918, which you'll be able to find under the Assault class after completing a couple of requirements first. The Ribby Roll 1918, which was officially called the Carabine Mitrailleuse 1918, was actually a French automatic carbine, first designed in 1916 by Paul Ribby Roll. It was the general manager of the Gladiator Cycle Company's factory, which would have normally made motorbikes and other vehicles, but was temporarily converted into an arms manufacturer to help produce several different weapons for the French army in World War I. Firing in both semi and fully automatic modes, the Ruby Roll was a bit of a test gun, chambered for its own experimental 8x35mm Ruby Roll round, one of the first intermediate cartridges designed for an automatic rifle. And these said bullets would have been fed into the weapon via a 25 round detachable box magazine slotted into the underside of the rifle. Something which suggests that the gun could have been designed with supportive fire in mind was the fact that it had its very own bipod. Though with it also having a bayonet, this meant that it was still geared up for assaulting enemy positions too, which kind of gave it dual purposes. The Ruby Roll was subjected to a bunch of tests throughout the summer of 1918, though it was never actually adopted by the military, down to its ammunition becoming inaccurate beyond 400 meters, and because it suffered with an unreliable mechanism, along with it being just a bit too heavy for a gun which couldn't be classified as an LMG. The Ribby Roll 1918 is often debatably considered to be the first true assault rifle ever created, with it utilising a purpose designed intermediate round, unlike the automatic Russian Fedorov Ovtomot, which appeared just a year or so before. Though because the Ribby Roll wasn't a service weapon, it's often pushed to one side. With the Great War ending in 1918, the rifle just kind of disappeared off the radar. But had the war carried on and further development continued on the weapon to perfect it, there's no doubt that the Ribery Roll 1918 would have been a very effective gun in the hands of French troops on the Western Front. So in Battlefield 1, the Ribery Roll is one of the DLC assault class weapons from They Shall Not Pass, which can be unlocked by getting yourself 50 kills with the Automatico M1918 factory variant, and also 20 headshots with the MP18 optical variant. As far as the damage goes, the gun's got a maximum value of 23, which will start to drop down gradually from 11 meters, eventually reaching its minimum damage of 15 beyond 46 meters. This basically means that the Ribby Roll is going to dish out a similar sort of damage to the other automatic assault weapons, but unlike the others, it can retain its damage much better over distance, as it's roughly got a 6 meter range advantage over both the MP18 and the Hell Eagle, and a 16 meter range advantage over the Automatico. The gun's still going to kill in 5 bullets up close, just like the others, but because damage drops off at a much more gradual rate, it's able to take down enemies in less bullets, making the Ribby Roll 1918 a more powerful weapon to use beyond close quarters. Because the gun's got the highest minimum damage value of the bunch, this also means that it can kill in one less bullet than the others at long distances too. And as far as damage is concerned, the Ribby Roll actually has more in common with some of the slower shooting support firearms like the Hewitt and the Lewis gun than the other assault class weapons. Firing at a speed of 550 RPM, the Ribby Roll is on par with the MP18, which just so happens to be the slowest firing automatic gun that an assault player can equip. It's not exactly a slouch, as you'll still be able to get those bullets out at a reasonable pace, but it's still not exactly a brilliant weapon for tearing through enemy players in CQC, and although it might deal a bit more damage over range, most of the time you're still probably going to get steamrolled by an automatico wielder up close, as they'll be able to take you out easier with that much quicker time to kill. Though at medium ranges, where the Ribby Roll shines a bit brighter than the other assault weapons, this slightly slower fire rate shouldn't prove to be too much of a problem. Something which is going to complement the weapon's effectiveness over distance is the fact that it's got the quickest muzzle velocity of the assault weapons, with those bullets flying through the air at a speed of 520 meters per second, which is 100 meters per second faster than the MP18. This is generally going to make the gun feel a bit more reliable at gunning down an opponent further away. There's less bullet travel time, and so you won't need to lead moving targets quite as much. Now, the Ribby Roll has one of the most interesting recoil patterns of the assault weapons, as its 0.16 horizontal value is going to make it a really accurate gun. 0.16 is an extremely low amount. It's not only the most accurate assault weapon, but it's even more precise than the support's Lewis gun. However, there's a bit of a catch here, as it's also got the highest vertical kick of the assault firearms, with a vertical figure of 0.42. So although the Ribby Rolls is an accurate rifle, that bouncing movement is going to reduce your stability, and ultimately make it a harder weapon to control. It's going to drift upwards a lot more as you pull down on that trigger. Though with that said, because the Ribby Roll has a very low first shot multiplier, you can always tap and burst fire the gun to help stay on target, and land those follow up shots more accurately. 
The gun's hipfire spread is the same as the Hell Regal, so it's a bit worse than the MP18 and the Automatico, which is another reason why it might be slightly less useful as a CQC weapon. Though unlike any of the other assault guns, the Ribberol is kitted out with its very own bipod, and although this isn't going to be very beneficial in those run and gun scenarios, it is going to help you out if you want to plant down in a defensive position, allowing you to utilise a huge bonus in both accuracy and stability, all whilst taking advantage of the weapon's stronger effectiveness over distance. The Ribberol has an ammo capacity of 25 rounds, the same as the Automatico, though because it has a slower RPM, you're not going to be burning through that ammunition quite as fast. Though with the MP18 and Hell Regal holding larger magazines, you'll still be forced to reload a little bit more, and so you're probably likely to get yourself in more vulnerable positions in CQC. So overall, the Ribberol 1918 is a gun which kind of bridges the gap between being an offensive and defensive rifle. It plays out as a more effective range weapon for the assault class, being able to retain a higher damage over distance, and ultimately killing less bullets beyond those closer proximities. This is complemented by a speedy muzzle velocity, accurate recoil pattern, and the fact that it's got its own bipod. Because it has a slower fire rate, a fairly small magazine size, and slightly worse hip fire accuracy than some of the other assault weapons, this means that it's probably not going to be quite as useful as those in CQC. And with it having a pretty violent upwards kick in full auto, this might also mean that you'll need to burst fire the gun more so to stay on target. But generally, the Ribberol is a very effective mid-range killing machine, which boasts some impressive damage over distance. And so long as you can control that recoil, it's a very reliable and versatile weapon to use, which can perform pretty well in most gunfights. So that's all for another one guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a like if you did, and subscribe for loads more, including the rest of the DLC weapons. Take it easy, and I'll see you in that next one.